on. All right, so these are the supplies I was talking about. And that's what you need in order to survive in the boonies. So I just spent uh, 70 bucks Canadian. And my plan was just to buy this. To buy this, this is a uh, bear spray and there's a whole, like it's not easy to to buy one you have to fill out a form they take you down your license they look at your they look at your what so basically this considered dangerous I think I need this either. So then how do you use it? I guess you have to... I'll have to read the instructions. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, this way, man. I'm guessing that's where the gas is coming from. Right? But why would it be like this? I'm guessing like this. I have no idea. I never used one, but just just in case. But I talked to a guy, so that I only wanted to buy this. But I talked to it on the way here. I had an interesting, uh, interesting conversation with uh, with uh, my taxi driver, and he says he says don't waste your money. And I said why? He says, that's like, kind of like last resort. He says, if I was you, I would just buy the the bells. So wood bells. And he says, well, they sell them everywhere. He says, just buy a couple. And he says, unless you run into a, like extremely dangerous situation, Let's say where you see a cub, you know, he says, that can be very dangerous. When you see a small bear, that means that the mama bear is somewhere close by. And he says, you don't want to be, you don't want to be anywhere near. <sighs> mama bear. And so he says, if you do this, they will hear you. And they will try to usually they will try to stay away so but that's you know just in case because again this thing it shoots like this will be empty in like five seconds but it's very um it acts as a real you know irritant so we'll see now i have to I have to get some food and after that I'll be ready to rock around. Of course for this you're supposed to have a you're supposed to have a like a holster you know because where I'm gonna carry it I'm just gonna put it on my belt right but I don't wanna I don't want to walk all the way there, there's Sobeys. Sobeys. But the car looks, you know, I just drove from the rental to here. It's pretty fast, as all of these uh, small cars are, you know, like picks up speed. And I like the steering wheel. I like the steering wheel, I like the shape of the steering wheel. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And uh, oh, actually, Starbucks. I wanted to get Starbucks. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll just go in here. And I was trying to find a setting on this car for tires 
because it does have that uh, TMA PC whatever but I could not find it like it wouldn't show me wouldn't show me wouldn't show me the tires you know like you can check the you can change your screen you see of course like this one is analog on the right but this one here it's either that or your radio or your liters per hundred kilometers or average and then I went into those uh, TMPS settings it just you choose units but where's the actual TMPS I don't see it so I'm just gonna leave it like that because that shows my tachometer right so anyway let's go grab some food I specifically want to buy water and some protein bars because that's what they recommend for the for the uh, for the trail something that you know if you get hungry you can snack or maybe get some uh, nuts you know in a bag so we'll see okay here's my supplies a large bottle of water that uh, when empty can help you know in a in a in a pinch if you need to go to the bathroom and there's nothing anywhere around so i got some deluxe mixed nuts i got some uh, raspberries blueberries got the avocado you cannot go anywhere without avocado this i'm gonna eat now i love that stuff and then i bought this recently i've been enjoying really it's expensive but in my opinion this is much better than the other one that uh, actually this is natural spring water i find it tastes actually much better than that uh, iceberg water and then strictly for for you know injuries and stuff i got some of this in case you know i get injured and i need to rinse the rinse the the wound or for the bears maybe you can i can throw that if the bells don't work i can throw that whiskey at the bear so you never know okay i have coffee i have my supplies my snacks are open and i uh, turn it off you see like this push push AC okay make it 20 you know, it's not automatic even or oh, push auto that's what I want on off all right but how do we kill this thing yeah this is settings clock system now i'm telling you some of these cars right like <laughs> I'm used to my, you know, Challenger vehicles or Dodge uh, Charger now. And I, what I did is, that's Canadian Tire. And these guys are usually pretty good. So, with, uh, you know, you can show up there and they will, they will check your tires. Okay, where's the exit from this place? I think it's this way. And so, yeah, so uh, I couldn't find the setting where you can actually see. No, that's not the exit. Where you can actually see your tire pressures. Looks like I looked at, I called uh, Avis. Said, son of a. 
the sign says do not enter. Why? And I called the Avis and I said, how do I see my tire pressures? I want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm going pretty far. So it's like four hour drive almost. And she says, well, without seeing the vehicle, I cannot help you. They're all different. <laughs> like, yeah, no, you know, I know. That's why I'm calling you. So I looked up in the manual and it looks like, looks like this cheap car is not equipped see like this is crazy why i couldn't exit over there there was an intersection over there so now i have to go through this mess turn around because this thing wants me to go back um actually wait a second which way am i going here i think this is 50th avenue so yeah i gotta I think I have to turn around because I have to go back to head south on 15th Avenue South in Alberta to alternate south or 8th Avenue West. Continue for six kilometers. Screw, screw you! I'm not going for six kilometers. I have to go north um, because yeah, Highway 11 is over there. And that's what the one I I I brought from I took coming back from that uh, Rocky Mountain house. And uh, you will see now because it thinks I I try to change the route. Now it's sending me south, but that's downtown. Like there's lights. You don't want to go that way. So I'm just gonna show you guys how I'm getting out of here, right? Because again, it's. Uh, unfamiliar town and by the way a couple of times this thing i i put in uh, lake louise alberta it's uh click start my look from my location here at canadian tire and before i put canadian tire when i was looking for canadian tire to buy you know the bear spray and the bells when i was leaving the avis i put canadian tire and it's like one kilometer away and so now when i'm trying this lake louise alberta it still thinks I'm on that trip and it says you you've arrived I'm like what the heck is going on you know I basically I had to reset the phone Head south toward Kings Avenue West. yeah I see 11 In 150 meters, use the left two lanes to turn left onto 67th Street. I think it's this one yeah see I was right on <laughs> Yeah, because this way. See what a s stupid setup, right? I was right there. They didn't allow me to. Um, oh, actually, it's actually good that I didn't go this way because I would have to turn around somewhere. I didn't realize that this was uh, already 11. And this thing, so yeah, again. Another thing I know why it's basic. This thing doesn't have the click. Um, you know when you push the, the turn signal down and release it, and it clicks three times by itself. Like all vehicles I had before, except of course the semi truck, they all have that. I really like that nifty feature, so you don't have to push it and then up, right? You just you know when you do a quick um, lane change or you know, like I remember Ford F one fifty had it. Dodge Ram had it, and then uh, Dodge Challenger, of course, had it. Mazda 3, I had had it. But this one, if you want to look it up, so Nissan Kicks. Brand new, it's probably like, I don't know, 18,000 bucks. Canadian. But it's automatic, the brakes are good. And so yeah, the lady says, no, I don't know how to uh, how to see the pressures, uh, you know. But she says, if you're not, if you if you think some of them are low, just go to any uh, oil change place. And they'll be happy to check it for you. And I know the Canadian Tire does it does this service because I used it in 
in um, Cambridge you just go to the front and you say hey can I please uh, have my tires checked and I explain to them over here I say hey I'm you know I just rented a car I cannot see the tire pressure settings on the dash um, can you please check I just because you know it's it's, it's a long drive with the, and over there in, in the mountains the the reception is going to be pretty bad cellular phone reception so let's say if something happens you blow a tire you can be sitting there for a very very long time you know but yeah the brakes are good it picks up speed pretty good uh, actually I like this car you know yeah it's basic but you know that's what you want for a rental because it, um, it's, it has great gas economy right so if I was driving my Dodge Charger over here um, I'd probably be doing like I don't know 10 liters 100 kilometers so this thing does 7 and I'm pretty sure I can I can drive you know like 120 130 that's what uh, when I had Mazda Mazda 3 right I had two Mazdas uh, both Mazda 3 because otherwise it's too expensive so one was uh, Mazda 3 kind of like basic with a 2 liter engine and 5 speed manual and the other one was a fancy the same Mazda 3 like a new another year I had it a couple of years later so that Mazda 3 was sport and that's like the most expensive uh, trim and that one was uh, full auto with a manual option right you can switch into manual and actually I think I had yeah I had pedals pedal shifters on the steering wheel and I had plus and minus over here so I can shift if I want and that car was 2.5 liters like the same body right it's like and and so yeah that car was super fast you know and excellent fuel economy and the only problem why I, I stopped buying Mazdas is um, they have like the ride is very harsh you know very tough like this one rides pretty good and my Charger my Challenger like F-150 Dodge Ram they all they run pretty good but Mazda it's like very stiff you know so basically they use uh, They use uh, on West for they use uh, what they call sport suspension right and that sounds like fun but in reality it's BS because it um, it's very tough it's not pleasant it just probably just so it's just designed basically I don't know if you're a race car driver and you want to be driving 300 kilometers an hour then yeah you need a stiff suspension so that the car holds the road right but for a regular even you know 120 130 140 kilometers an hour I want to be comfortable right I don't want the car jump on every pothole and I even called the dealer after I bought the second and last Mazda 2.5 so everything is great you know the car the quality plastic the transmission uh, fuel economy speed power it was perfect so my only beef with that Mazda 3 was was the ride right and so I called the dealer and I asked him about this and they said I said is there any Continue for 800 meters. is there anything I can do like maybe change tires you know or is there anything you can modify you know like on some like Mustang or something you can modify the suspension you can you can go to a shop and they can change your suspension they can make it softer you know tougher change shocks but that's another problem with Mazdas is that you cannot you cannot modify anything like that car is not is not this that car is not designed for any mods you know
so there's no parts there's no tuners anywhere there's there's nothing like I wasn't able you know usually I put like a tuner I change exhaust yeah I think on that one I changed the exhaust that was the only thing I did I uh, I changed um, I switched mufflers to uh, I think I put spin tech or flow mast or something like that and um, but of course it sounded pretty lame you know because of four cylinder engine but they're right so yeah so I called the dealer and the dealer says no there's nothing you can do that's how Mazda uh, outfits these vehicles they're all like that and I said then that's it I'm not gonna buy another Mazda I'm sorry like that's but it's you still you know it's a very reliable car I was pretty happy about that reliability speed engine power fuel economy nice all right what are we, why are we driving so slow you know we're in drive mode like this thing takes a long time to pick up speed because I guess oh yeah because it's automatic so it just shifts into highest gear as soon as possible and of course when I push the accelerator it downshifts and now it tries to speed up but I was supposed to get a Hyundai you know the Hyundai Elantra Hyundai and I did the reservation on on uh, Priceline and then I received an email that says uh, your reservation has been confirmed everything is good and so I show up there like I said that lady was really angry upset about something I don't know and she she rushes through signing of everything explains to me I cannot smoke la 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 and then says okay here's the key uh, if you find any more like issues I marked all the damage you know like on the windshield here right and then a couple of in uh, dents on the on the hood she says if you find anything else you can come back and get me or we can document it if not look for a black car near the road Nissan kicks here's your key that's it I did not like it one bit usually I try to use enterprise but uh, there was nothing here like in well there is an enterprise but it's very it was busy they didn't have uh, cars uh, for these particular dates so today is Friday of course oh and that's that was actually another thing about Mazda so uh, tough ride no mods possible and the last one also a bit annoying was because the car was so light right whenever it's windy you know you have to hold you have to hold the steering wheel with with two hands you know the car was all over the road And the same with this one okay now we're passing by the way the speed limit 110 over here 110 I'm doing 128 120 what is it so basically as long as you know in Canada it's recommended don't go over 15 or 20 K an hour and that's where I was in the morning that's my Howard Inn so this is the southern part that's my favorite A&W burger place and that's the McDonald's and that's where my truck should be yeah I can see it I see it it's still there and that's the Holiday Inn I wanted to go to but I messed up and they booked me for a different one anyway 
oh and finally now I can see I want to see why is you know Google Maps always shows if you want to go south it's it says closed oh yeah sure enough I see berries over there huh so basically yeah if you want to go from my truck to this side and there's the overpass over there right when they say no the road is closed you have to go back and do a huge loop to end up on the other side all right see it is closed interesting and this thing is supposed to have a adaptive cruise control that one feature i never i never had in my uh, vehicles it's supposed to be pretty good i think it's that's the sign over here So it, it should automatically maintain the safe distance from a car in front of you. And so yeah, I wanted to go, I wanted to go west on 11 uh, through the Rocky Mountain House, but when I programmed this destination. Google Maps said this the quickest the quickest way was go like this towards Calgary so this is highway 2 so we're going south on, on highway 2 and then we take bypass around um, around Calgary and then we jump on what is it Trans Canada one so basically yeah mountains are that way right so but the Lake Louise is southwest so either I go west on 11 and then go down through the mountains on Highway 93. Or I go like this and then I go west and Lake Louise is right there. show you before we hit Calgary is uh, like this exit 384 it says highway 42 that's where they have um, they have that big rest area actually with uh, kind of like a truck stop that's where I sat last year right when I brought that uh, drilling rig to Lacombe, Alberta, just north of Red Deer. And it was March, it was cold. And then I, I found this on Tracker Path. This thing. It's a huge area, lots of parking, nobody bothers you. There's a gas station, there's a Wendy's inside, there's coffee. But there's nothing around, you know? But it's a good, they're building something, I think they're building like a Tim Hortons or something over there. So we have 112 kilometers to go before we hit exit 271, and that's the that's the bypass.
and of course this, this proves that you see a small car can move pretty fast you know so this proves that on the highway you don't need a big engine but the difference is like this car in my car Dodge Charger right with 5.7 V8 so first of this car is all over the place in windy conditions because it's too light and secondly it takes forever to pick up speed right if, if this was my Dodge Charger I push gas I, I switch on the sport mode that thing is like a rocket you know but of course the downside is is that it burns gas right this is much more economical this is this is better for you know when you go on a long trip like this one so it's about 350 kilometers one way and then I'm gonna so I'm gonna go on a trail today so first I'm gonna check in uh, into the hotel at 4 o'clock and then I'm gonna go on a trail and then Sunday and then to, tonight when I go back to the hotel I'm gonna research what other trail to take and uh, and see tomorrow I want to go to explore that explore the Lake Moraine. Now this guy that I passed, so now he's sitting on my bumper. Uh, but he was not leaving his lane when I tried to pass him, so I'm not leaving either. And it looks like I cannot activate the the cruise control. Calgary this is uh, still highway 2 I'm about six miles nine kilometers away from my turn and now the highway has three lanes but we have construction over here so I'm looking for exit 271 and I take back what I said about three click turn signal this thing has it it just I was pushing too hard like these uh, signals are more sensitive than on my Dodge Charger and so you have to be lighter you know if you just touch it it gives you three clicks on my car at home on the Charger you have to push it harder and so I did not realize that and so now yeah it's you touch it left three clicks left you touch it up three clicks up perfect and I uh, this is the first time ever I tried using the adaptive cruise control it's really cool the car slows down by itself when there's a, like a situation like this you know it has sensors in the front so it measures the distance uh, and let's say I set up the speed at 130 and then there's a car like this in front of me I see the speed starts going 125 120 and then when the guy changes lanes and uh, the lane is clear I see the speed goes back to 130 you know but usually you know if, if there's a lot of traffic I I'm a big believer in uh, cruise control but in a car in a car it's difficult to use it in a big city because the speed constantly changes like in a truck in a semi truck I set my speed typically 57 58 miles per hour oh check this out the scale the scale is open 
and uh, all the poor truckers have to go in there for inspection and uh, to get weighed if they're flagged down because that's the beauty you know of driving a car no e-logs no inspection stations man i miss this you know and of course in my car i don't drive i mostly drive in in, in the in town right it would be cool to take my charger that's you know my kind of like a dream one day uh, to do the trip across Canada um, to do a trip across Canada and maybe go east you know first go east go all the way to Nova Scotia because over there it's beautiful and uh, and then just drive from Nova Scotia and then you go west you, you, you enter New Brunswick then Nova Scotia well sorry no, uh, yeah Nova Scotia then New Brunswick Quebec and then you can do a shortcut to uh, Northern Ontario and then you jump on that 1117 or actually maybe on 17 near the lake right if it's if you're in a car it doesn't matter but it's really would be a really nice uh, trip and then you go through Thunder Bay you enter Manitoba Saskatchewan Alberta and then yeah I would go on Trans Canada 1 and go through Calgary and go into the mountains you know like have my camera with me my GoPros and do like a road trip uh, exit 271 this is the bypass uh, stony trail Now it's working. Now I, I'm I'm gentle. Yes, there's bypass to Lethbridge, Banff. Keep to the right. Yeah. See the sign says bypass to Banff. And that's what we need. I need this bypass. Use the right lane to take exit 271 and keep right at the Yes, ma'am. Calgary is over there and we're just jump jumping on the bypass and we're going southwest and now the mountains are straight there and so this 201 will take me to highway 1 Trans-Canada 1 and then we'll go west I think from here it's about uh, two hours about 200, 200 clicks, 124 miles. All right, what's the speed limit? 100, okay. Exit 36 from the bypass. This should be Trans Canada 1. But there's some massive construction right here. Keep left at the fork. 
that's Flagman. Yeah, this guy's taking the exit. We don't need the west. Continue on Alberta 1 west for 29 kilometers. Yes, yeah, the sign said west to Banff. It's this way. one lane oh no there's another one there's two lanes over there so I'm on I'm still on a ramp narrow bridge Ranger is a cool looking truck, you know. Except Ford Ranger, except I don't like it that it's so narrow. Remember we had a Ranger in the US and Canada, right? And then they discontinued it. I think it was like 2013 or 2014, something like that. But they introduced the new Ranger with a modern body in Australia. And uh, reporters noticed that, so they started publishing stories, you know. Is the new Ranger coming to America? And, you know, sure enough, you go to www.ford.au, Ford Australia, and you see the Ranger, which was kind of, like, weird. And then eventually... They brought it to to North America. Okay, and once we get to the top of that hill, we'll be able to see the mountains. I already saw them at the top of a hill on, on 201, but they're far away, but very far away, so the GoPro is not gonna pick it up, but it might. So from here it's hour 37 minutes. Oh wow, it's only 165 clicks, just over 100 miles to Lake Louise, Alberta. A small village in the mountains. And uh, you have to pay a fee, by the way, because once you enter a certain area, everybody has to pay. It's like unbelievable, right? These are mountains. Why do I have to pay to see the mountains? Well, sir, it's a park. So, since our government is so poor, and we don't receive any funding, we have to charge... All tourists have to pay in order to for us to support this park. Basically, you can buy, a friend of mine told me you can buy like a daily pass or you can buy a pass for a few days. I'm not sure yet uh, how many days I need. Well, for sure I'll be, to, I'll be there today and tomorrow, that's for sure. Uh, because today is Friday, Saturday, maybe I'll stay there on Sunday. Or just that you know the hotels are so expensive over there right you see that's why some people on YouTube and online they were saying uh, better get a hotel in Calgary because you see from here it's a hundred miles hundred miles to Lake Louise let's say let's say you get up you know you book a hotel over here whereas they're like two times cheaper than over there and then you get up at five o'clock and you know get your coffee seven you'll be there you know and then you do your thing you walk around you feed the bears and then you drive back two hours uh, and you go back to your hotel but of course that means that you spend pretty much four hours driving 
Whereas for me, I am I am still driving four hours, but from Red Deer. All right, and I'm, now I'm going to the super fancy hotel. Well, three star, I think it is. But you know, 200 bucks. I don't. I rarely pay that much, even though it's Canadian. But I rarely pay such high prices because I try to find like good deals. But. straight into the mountains and I think there'll be a gate yeah once you enter there'll be a sign that says Banff National Park because this whole highway Trans Canada goes through Banff National Park and then like come on man what are you doing in the left lane looking at the airplanes started always only at uh, in the morning it was pretty chilly plus seven now we have plus 20 which is perfect but I did bring my my coat with me I have a sweater and I didn't bring any t-shirts I just have one on me I hope I don't smell too bad after that hike and I chose, uh, you know, I did research online like uh, family-friendly hikes in Banff Park. Uh, I mean trails, family-friendly trails. And I found a website where all trails were kind of like classified as, you know, easy. And then I think it was mild, like basically medium difficulty, right? But easy is just means that it's on a flat ground there's no elevation gain but that also means that you're not going into the mountains like what's the fun in that right and then I found uh, I looked up on Google Maps and I see you know a trail because Google Maps shows trails like especially big ones and I see a trail and I magnified the picture till I could see the the name and the name said uh, what was it? Uh, tramp? Something like tramp. Like a tram. Tram. Like a streetcar. Tram. And I found it on that list with all the trails. And turns out this tram trail, it's like five kilometers one way. And it's medium difficulty because you gain uh, 100 meters or 300 feet in elevation. So basically you, you have to climb, right? But it's gradual, over five kilometers, three miles. And I brought my hiking poles, of course, with me. But what's going on? Of course, there's a guy in a pickup truck with a, with a trailer. You know, usually that's, it's either a truck in the front or it's a guy like this. With some baby 13 inch wheels. No, make that 11. 11 inch wheels on his trailer. Oh, and this guy passed me. Wait a second. <laughs> that was the guy that I was angry at. So now he passes me and he's stuck behind the same guy. Anyway, now the sign at the top says Canmore Banff. This way. All right. Well, this is it. We're entering the mountains. Yeah, this car, it's very windy today. So I see how the car struggles with the wind. Because, you know, I'm doing 120 kilometers an hour, 75 miles per hour. 
and I can see by IPM, RPM how the car quite often shifts like downshifts because it cannot maintain 120 kilometers an hour in the top speed uh, with this wind so I bet I did you know I had no idea a car like this exists like this kicks Nissan kicks so if you guys look it up online I bet this thing is less than two liters I'm guessing it's either 1.4 or 1.6 I'm gonna look it up myself later but very weak very weak engine like if it's a straight road right straight road no wind you can do you know 150 but as soon as there's a hill and a bit of a wind this thing starts uh, downshifting and I passed a sign that said entering uh, entering uh, park and there was a park name something with B-O-W bow but this is not the park where I'm going And I actually drove on this highway, on this scary highway. Like in a car, it's fun, right? You look at the mountains, it's all cool, you know? But you see the guy in the front, in the drive-in? Okay, drive-in is not too bad, right? But that guy has a three-axle trailer. So that means he can be heavy, right? And there's heels all over the place. Like, look at this like for a car it's nothing okay i'm gonna it's gonna downshift but then i but that guy is uh the sign on the door says he's from sorry bc all right you see now it was like 4500 rpm now it goes down to 3.4 yeah this thing is no match for the Mazda 3 I had because it's similar category right but this especially that 2.5 liter on the Mazda it was it was a really fun engine with a sport yeah it had to actually it had the sport button there and now I remember on the oh check this out guys are paragliding there's a parachute there's a lake and the guy has uh, water skis and then the wind just raises him and he can glide but I don't envy his legs when he <laughs> falls on the water because water is very hard right it's, it's like pavement Yeah, so now the road will be going between these mountains. You see they're blocking the sunlight. And then eventually we should get to, to Lake Louise, a small village in the mountains. You see, and there's lots of lots of places where you can stop take some photos like you know if you like the view with that uh, concrete plant this is a perfect place to stop which reminds me that i wish i had i i hadn't sold that you know 70 to 200 millimeter lens because now I only have two lenses. I have 18 to 35, which is perfect for some wide angle shots. And then I have 300 millimeter. And so 300 would be cool, like for some far away mountains, but you know, when you're right here, Like some people are just you know like you want to sightsee get in the curb lane right but some people 
you can just feel they're driving and they're not looking at the road like the speed limit is 110 right this guy in the left lane is doing less than 100 well now he speeds up something clicked in the brain oh people are pressing me hold on This is gorgeous, right? Like, I'm only three hours away from this beauty. Like, why would I, you know, sit in, in, in Red Deer and just stare at the screen of my computer, you know? Like, uh, actually, I did went, I did go to the load board this morning. I spent like an hour looking at some loads, but there was nothing. Nothing. Well, actually, I did see eventually something started showing up, but. There was a load in uh, Northern Ontario, uh, you know, like three days away. But at least it would take me back home and it would pay for fuel, but I quoted them a price. They didn't like it. They said it's too high. It looks like you're trying to charge us for the deadhead from Alberta. Uh, I'm not sure we want to do that. And I said, hey, I'm flexible. Just tell me what your budget, yeah, he says, we don't think that fits our budget. Okay, so tell me your budget. Uh, let me get in touch with the customer. Like this guy doesn't even know what they wanna pay, right? So, you know, but he knows that my rate is too high. Like, how do you know, right? It's not within our budget. And so I ask him for a budget. The guy says, I'll have to get to, to my customer. I'll get back to you. Like, I'm telling you, some of these brokers, it's all basically lie, 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 lie. They know perfectly well what they're willing to pay. And then another guy sent me a, a very exciting uh, email. He sends me a picture of a tank army tank but more like I would say it's not an army tank it's uh, yeah it does have a, a cannon and it looks like a tank but it's very light like I don't understand how a tank can be only 40 metric tons so basically 92 95 thousand pounds um, and he asked me for a quote to move a tank that tank inside Canada from Eastern Canada to, oh, it says, welcome to Canmore. So this is Canmore. And we are, uh, we are 86 clicks away from my hotel. So 50, 50. That's what, that was another suggestion. Somebody online was saying, you know, where can you stay cheaper if you want to see Lake Louise and you don't want to pay, you know, if you don't want to pay 200 bucks a night or 300 or 400, uh, so uh, uh, possibility one was Calgary. Calgary two hours away or, or Canmore, this town. So this one is only one hour away and the uh, hotels here are cheaper. So there's a cop on the bridge. Well, I'm the slowest guy. Like if he gives me a ticket, like check people in the left lane. But speed, speed limit is 110, I was doing 120. Basically, six miles over. I'm not the guy he's looking for. He's looking for somebody who's doing 20 miles over, which is uh, 30 kilometers over. So here, 110 plus 30, 140. So if somebody's doing, let's say, 145, that's what that's who he's looking for. Somebody above above 30 kilometers an hour. I guarantee it. Or maybe he can give a ticket to that guy in the white Kia 
who's stuck in the left lane doing 60 miles an hour. Like, man, like I said, the, you, I can feel that the guy is just driving and looking at the scenery. But that's why I moved here, right? I don't want to get a ticket. I saw a couple of cops before there. I see they're hiding in bushes, you know, with binoculars. Um, and plus, you know, I'm not in a rush, right? My check-in time is only 4 p.m. Now it's 1.16, I'm one hour away. But I'm still gonna go. I'm gonna go and uh, ask them if I can check in, like, you know, basically check in on paper. I'll tell them, hey, I don't need the room, right? Because I just wanna get my into my car and go to the parking lot near the where the trail begins but I want to check in so that they know they know I'm there because you know some, some of these hotels they get so busy that if you don't show up let's say by eight o'clock they assume you 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 change your plans you know and so yeah I want to let them know that I'm here Man, this this reminds me of my you know what my favorite state in US is Montana. I love Montana, but what is Montana if a copy of this? Because these are it's the same mountains. It's the same mountains. Like why are we doing 105 here? I'm telling you, some of these people here, like, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, we're talking to the wife. Okay. So you want to go to this uh, church or the other one? No, maybe the other one. This one looks ugly. Okay, you see the guy just passed us. Let's follow that guy. So, yeah, this is, what did they say? Kenmore. Kenmore, a bunch of hotels here. Yeah, probably this, that's what I should have done because it's only one hour from here, right? So you get up at six, seven o'clock, you are at the lake. And of course, there's a bunch of trails here because you can see there's mountains all over the place. And, um, but man, yeah, this is gorgeous. I'm so happy that I, did, I found time to do this. It's kind of like, you know they have a li there's a book you know like your bucket list 1000 places to visit something like that right this is definitely one of them rocky mountains banff banff alberta and actually i'm a capricorn and if you look at the horoscopes, you know, and when where Capricorns like to live and supposed to live, they always say that Capricorns do well in mountain surroundings because they like fresh air, they need fresh air. the leaves are turning yellow green I don't see too much red but I see a lot that's I guarantee there's a there's a trail somewhere here like they have these uh, parking spots so you park and they grab your you grab your hiking poles yeah you see oh I think that's where I pay you see the sign says Banff National Park two kilometers there'll be some gates in there there'll be some gates and I asked my friend who's from this area well he's from uh, Nisku and I, I was a bit worried like how do you pay do I need to carry cash or is it you know what is it and he says no they have bank machines they have bank machines and um, okay park pass holders Park pass holders. Uh, go to the right. So yeah, now I have to read the signs because I have to buy the pass. So like this area, right? Like I said, you have to pay. Okay, purchase. 
or yeah the right uh, right left two lanes purchase park pass do not feed any wildlife all right here we go Banff National Park. Uh, be prepared to stop. You see that one is closed, so you have Red Cross, so this one is open. Okay, so I better get my my debit card or my my credit card. And so that's it. So I think I'm gonna end the video here because I think my GoPro is about to die. But I have two of them. And so this is nine. It's still it shut off a couple of times by itself, like really annoying, you know. I never had this with eight, and so now I have uh, I have a um, uh, chest mount because now I'm using my head mount, and I'm gonna grab my chest mount and I'm put uh, I'm gonna put GoPro eight on the chest and I have a spare battery for that one because nine uses different battery, but eight I have two batteries. And I'm gonna record uh, so this will be just the video about the trip to the park and then I'll do it today and then second video will be about the trail uh, that uh, tram hiking trail in Lake Louise Alberta that would be the second video so so far so good thanks for checking uh, out my channel I hope you guys enjoy it I understand it's not about tracking but you know, I cannot track 24/7. You gotta, you gotta enjoy life uh, once in a while, right? Stay tuned.